Hey guys, Mr. Post here, and on today's video, we'll be looking at naming ionic compounds when you're provided with a formula. Let's go into our first example. All right, here we go. The formula is Na1F1 or NaF, and I want you to provide a name for me. Can you actually name that compound? On a quiz, you would see this with multiple choice answers, perhaps. And if you weren't, you still need to know how to answer this question. So please press pause, attempt to answer this question. Anytime I'm naming binary ionic compounds, binary ionic compounds, meaning ionic compounds with two elements involved in them, the first thing you're going to do is write down the name of the first element is sodium. And then you have to name the second element. Now, traditionally it's, you would say, sodium and fluorine. The only thing I'm going to tell you, though, you need to drop the I-N-E and add an I-D-E. So this becomes sodium fluoride. Okay? So once again, you have sodium comes first. You read it like a book. Fluorine comes second. Comes next over in the periodic table. Instead of fluorine, you drop the I-N-E and put an I-D-E. So therefore, for all elements that are over here, and this is a binary ionic compound, all right? binary ionic compound such as NaCl chlorine becomes chloride that becomes sodium chloride MgF2 would become not magnesium fluorine magnesium fluoride and another example would be let's just do MgO instead of magnesium oxygen it becomes magnesium oxide so once again that is a driving point in all binary ionic compounds you name the metal first then the nonmetal second, drop the suffix and replace with an IDE ending. Okay, guys, here we go. This is NaHCO3. Can you name this? Okay, take a shot. You might need to use um, some information from a different worksheet we had in the past to answer this question, but please give this one a shot. Press pause and fire away. Okay, well, the first thing I'm going to note here is that the first element is sodium. Now, the second element is carbon, the last element is oxygen, there's three of them. Now, this actually happens to be a polyatomic ion, CO3. And that polyatomic ion has a name, carbonate. Now, polyatomic ion is an ion, an ion is an Oh, a group of atoms or an atom that has a charge to it. And this actually has a charge. It's 2 minus. So carbonate is an ion. It has a 2 minus charge. It's called polyatomic because there's more than one atom. And guess what? It has a charge. So when I write this down, this becomes sodium carbonate. Okay, it's not sodium carbon oxide. It's sodium carbonate. Okay, I think a lot of people I've seen actually use this and they say sodium carbide or something uh, bizarre like that, please, you'll be given a list of polyatomic ions, reference them, and name them exactly as you see. Another uh, example of one would be NaOH, where the polyatomic ion is this guy right here, and OH has a 1 minus charge. That's what makes it an ion. Okay, and just like this here, the 2 minus, that's what makes it an ion. Okay, so we're looking here at NaOH, and this is going to be sodium, and this is going to be hydroxide. All right, dudes, so you don't change any IDA ending this sodium hydrogen hydride or something bizarre. You're going to look, look at a list I'm going to provide you with of polyatomic ions, name them uh, from that list. So this for example I gave you on this slide was sodium carbonate. All right, guys, the last example we're doing today is this one. This is AuO2. Uh, please do me a favor and name this guy. One thing I want to do before we uh, name this guy, I want to highlight here on the periodic table, there is a staircase. And the staircase separates the non-metals from the metals. Okay? One thing you're going to see now on this example is that I have an element that actually is inside my D block. Okay, the D block of elements is located right here, and there is my element that's AU, that's gold. 
So gold is located right here, and you're not going to be able to look at the top of the column and get the charge. Okay? You cannot find the charge by looking at the top of these numbers here. These numbers will not help you at all for finding the charges. Whenever I have an element that is located within the D block and also underneath the staircase, minus aluminum, I need to actually note the charge when I name the formula because these are known as variable charge ions. Because they have more than one charge, we have a whole lesson on this, guys. You can tune into that uh, video for it. You need to name the name the charge when you name the element. So once again, it's for an element that's found in the D block and underneath the staircase minus aluminum. So all these elements in blue would need more than one charge named. So when I name this one, I'm going to name this gold. And I'm going to name it with the charge going inside. This is where the charge is going to get whatever the charge is. I'll put it inside there. Gold something, and this is oxide. Because this is still a binary ionic compound. That's an element that has a compound that has one atom and two different types of atoms. There's not a third type of atom in there. There's just two types. Therefore, I get the two binary ionic compound. So we need to find out what the charge on oxygen is. I think the simplest way to do it would be just to draw it like this. I have two oxygen atoms, and I have one gold atom. And each oxygen atom is a given. The given is it's a two minus charge, two minus charge. Guess what, guys? I got four minuses there all together. Over here, I must have a four plus. That four plus needs to be distributed only into one atom, making it a four plus. So the charge up here is actually going to be Roman numeral four. So it's gold four oxide. Now, if you just tell me gold oxide by itself, you will get the problem wrong. You have to identify the charge. The charge on gold is four. And that is a charge we see right down there. All right, guys, it's just meant to be a quick review, helping you for this upcoming exam. Best wishes. Take it easy, guys.